and welcome this 28th of December 2012 to another edition of the Video Health Research Report. And to start off, we have three stories this time. And keep in mind, it's by Christmas time, and Santa does not deliver a lot of research. But three very thought-provoking articles. First one will be ready to eat the first GM fish, genetically modified fish, ready for the dinner table. Two will be our GMOs sterilizing Serbia. And three, maybe it's time for a little human enhancement, morally enhancing drugs added to our water supply. All right, first off, ready to eat the first genetically modified fish for the dinner table. Now this little article came out in one of the, some of the London papers, and what it was was a prelude to basically introducing genetically modified meats to the dinner table. Not that many of you care. However, to think about it, it's kind of interesting. This was about 17 years in development. It's genetically modified salmon. What it does, it grows about twice the size of normal salmon. And what they did is it just took some genes from a couple of fishes and mixed them in until you had a super salmon. Now, keep this in mind, uh, that basically, supposedly, this genetically modified salmon that they're coming up with are going to be sterilized or sterile females. So they're not supposed to be able to enter the wild and propagate with the regular salmon population, henceforth leading to some sort of apocalyptic um, scenario. Here it goes. GM salmon grows twice as fast as ordinary fish. It can be the first genetically modified animal in the world to declare it safe to eat. I always like how they wonder how it's declared it safe to eat. If it's been around for 17 years, why isn't the Food and Drug Administration, which approved this, been eating it for 17 years so we can see what it does? If they don't grow an extra eye or a limb comes off, all right, then maybe we're in the right ballpark of it being safe. The U.S. and Food and Drug Administration said it could not find any valid scientific reason to ban the production of genetically modified Atlantic salmon. Can it find any reason? Now think about this. That means if they don't do a study to show that there's a negative side effect, to eating genetically modified salmon, then they can't find a reason not to eat it. So if I can't find a health reason not to eat dirt in the backyard, then obviously it could be generally recognized as safe according to the FDA. Yay. All right. And it will lead to commercial production, which is interesting if you think of salmon. What is the number one counterfeited item in the world? Wild Atlantic salmon. So, this opens up a whole new venue for basically counterfeiters, because now they can use the really cheap stuff. All right, the FDA had indicated this was fit for human consumption. Again, where's the study? Huh? All right, I guess, and then they said, well, again, why don't they eat it? But you will. And if you're in California, look at the bright side. California voted not to label genetically modified foods. So, where is the wonderful, the most perfect introduction market to genetically modified Atlantic salmon? In the one place in the world you don't have to label genetically modified foods. California. So, guess where it's going to end up first, probably? Is California. Opponents of the genetically modified salmon, there were opponents, obviously there's always many, which have some dubbed the frankenfish, have argued it could escape into the wild, interbreed with wild fish, and undermine the genetics of the endangered Atlantic salmon, the king of fishes, grown on fish farms in the UK. Now again, there's also these fish are supposed to be sterile and kept in secure containers and land. Now if I don't know if you remember the story back in a long time ago, in the 1980s, there was something called C. toxifolia, which was an algae, which wasn't even genetically modified, but was bred to a certain uh, aggressive species, which looked very pretty. It was actually, I think it was uh, Wilhelm Stuckert, Germany, uh, Wilhelm Zoo, or whatever it was, that was developed. And that algae today, C. toxifolia, the deadly algae, was accidentally dumped from a fish tank. Uh, I forgot exactly which fish tank it was. I think it was the Oceanic Institute of uh, Monaco. And then it was obviously propagating now throughout the entire ocean, which is virtually no way to stop it. That was also supposed to never escape. And I can't explain how many genetically modified seeds that were never supposed to propagate into the natural, into the wild environment have escaped. So what I'm saying, 
the FDA could say, oh, it's not going to interfere with anything, there's no chance of escaping, well, guess what? you got a bloody, lousy track record of making sure genetically modified organisms don't, do not escape into the environment. So, we'll see what happens. All right. The possibility of GM escaping to the rivers and the sea from land-based fish farms is extremely remote, the FDA says. And, of course, that's obviously the famous last words, the FDA. But the FDA is never accountable to anybody. So, what do they really got to lose? So, genetically modified salmon opening up a gateway to a whole new level of genetically modified meats. Soon to be at a table. At your table. All right. Now, the next headline, which is ironic, are GMOs sterilizing Serbia? Now, let's read a little bit more into this. And of course, you know, obviously we always say, what do Russians know? Except, obviously, they know how to get our astronauts into space, and we don't. So, let's look at the ignorant Russians and see what they have to say. It is no time for joking in Serbia. The ban on GMO currently in force, which obviously they ban them, could spoil a country's relationship with the United States and the World Trade Organization. I have no clue what the WTO has to be so adamant in regards to telling people of the world what they should and should not eat. Something really psycho about that. All right, and of course, the, this goes in a little further. It goes, the anti-transgenic sentiments of this are strong in Serbia. Probably because they read. They impose GMO on us in order to sterilize our nation. Sterilize our nation? What the heck is this supposed to be? Said the executive director of Novi Sad Ecological uh, Movement to Nikola Alaskic, which I'm probably butchering the name, said in an interview with The Voice of Russia. Again, what can the possibly the Russians possibly mean by sterilizing Serbia? Now, obviously, Bill Gates has nothing to do with world population or world population control and things like that. And obviously, Bill Gates is a big uh, investor in Monsanto. But no, who would want to sterilize a country? All right. For the past two decades, uh, oh, sorry, I take that back. Serbia is experiencing serious problems because of the import of illegal geni genetically modified organisms. Isms. Who in the world would want to illegally import genetically modified organisms into a country to begin with? They said that its sterility rates and the cancer rates in Serbia begin to skyrocket. Now, keep this in mind. Often we say cancer rates are skyrocketing because we have an older population coming into play. What's the average life expectancy in Russia? Yeah, I thought so. For the past two decades, scientists around the world have been arguing about the dangers of GMOs, and Russia is no exception. The doctor of biological sciences and international expert on environmental and food security, Irina Ermakova, I hope I said that right, believes that very inefficient technologies are used when GMOs are being created. Interesting, what she's saying is she's not anti-genetically modified organisms, and none of us really are. We just don't trust the people who are doing it, because they haven't proven to us yet that they're responsible enough to produce anything genetically modified. Because during my experiments, and then on top of that, they do stupid studies. And I should say Ermakova will get to that. During my experiments, I added genetic, not I, obviously I'm reading, quoting, I added genetically modified soy to the food of female rats. I was interested to see what happened to their progenies. More than 50% of the young rats died in the first two or three weeks. About one half the remaining rats were physically undeveloped and were not procreant, meaning they couldn't procreate. Later, these studies were repeated. Remember, that's science. You get a result, and then you got to try to repeat it. All right, so they did that. And with mice and hamsters and other Russian institutes, and the results were the same. Wow, what an incredible coincidence. Maybe it just has something to do with Russian mice. Obviously, American mice much li must, live, must live much longer on genetically modified organisms than we. But there's a trick to that. All right. They said, this means they obviously they had cancers. Uh, it, they basically many similar studies of independent trans uh, national corporations are being carried out in the world. They all show negative results. Coincidence. This means the deterioration of internal organs and cancer. But there's an interesting thing. When we study genetically modified organisms, as in mice, for example, we like to keep the studies at about two to three months because that's a nice short time frame. Why? Because at four or five months, huge tumors begin to appear and internal organs begin to fail. So 
let's let's push that aside. Let's do two or three months. And if you don't believe me, or if you have doubts, then have the research centers put their money where their mouth is. Or won't you have a couple of science classes in high school? Run some independent studies. See what happens to mice when it's fed genetically modified organisms for four or five months. I'm sure some high school out there is, or some high school student would love to do the science project and make sure it's supervised. Make it done in class. Do it a couple of times. See if you could recreate the results the Russians are getting. All right, feed them whatever genetically modified food you want. Salmon. All right. They said, quote, we have several producers of seeds. The interesting thing about Serbia, why they're trying to push GMOs on them so bad. Get to that in a second. We have several producers of seed which are largely, which are widely known, including in Russia. If the country allows GMO seeds, these institutes will close. And about 5,000 people will lose their jobs. Which, and they will become dependent on products of the Monsanto Corporation. Yay! All right, and the purchase of the products will cost a minimum of 100 million, 180 million euros per year. Yay! I guess if you had a company that didn't keep all the money offshore or whatever it is. Thousands of farmers in India have already committed suicide because of the activities of Monsanto and literally have led them to debtor's prison. Don't believe me? Research that. You'd be blown away how much goodwill genetically modified organisms have brought to other parts of the world. In addition, guess what? Serbia has the potential to supply the organic needs of a growing Europe. So what a better way to stop that immediately than to have the adulteration or contamination of genetically modified foods introduced now before Serbia can get its organic production facilities off the ground and start supplying Europe the demand for non-genetically modified organic foods. Hmm, good way to get rid of your competition. Make them just like you. All right. Thus, after adopting GMOs, we will lose the promising market. Oh, other side. I like this part. It is well known that removing the ban on GMOs is one of the conditions and accessions to the World Trade Organization. You know what? I don't like this WTO very much. It seems it got some sort of control freak thing about what people eat. Who cares? And an interesting little saying in Serbia. Because in Serbia, they even joke that the end of the world did not come because the country did not fulfill the preconditions of the apocalypse. Well, good for you, Serbia. I mean, I appreciate it, but I'm glad at least someone's doing some research on GMOs in a non-biased, experimental bias venue. According to us, we just conform, you know, obviously. You know, we have tons of people out there, and they've been eating GMOs for a while. They don't even look anything like their ancestors used to. Nothing wrong there. All right. And now, just because some of us don't conform very well, or actually want answers to certain things before they're pushed on us, I like this title. Maybe it's time for a little human enhancement. Enhancement meaning what? Physically? Sexually? Make you run faster? Perform better? Jump higher? No! We don't care about that. We want morally enhancing drugs added to our water supply. Now keep in mind, keep this in mind, enhancing. I like how they use the word morally enhancing, and I'll get back to that in a little bit. I, I digress. There's something in the water. Now, this is some of their quotes that they're going to say, I'm not going to have anything to do with. That's why we say when we reserve a bunch of locals behaving the same way, or same odd way, but maybe it's also an answer to some more thornier problems. I don't think that's what they meant by the something in the water. It says tap water is a host of different elements, including naturally occurring minerals, as well as chlorine and fluoride, which uh, fluoride's a whole different ball game. We already got problems with that. But obviously it's the argument since it's there already, why not add a few more other things because you're already accepting con uh, medicated water. Why not just enhance the medication? They say, and this is their quote, not mine. It said, if you want to quietly murder a city, poison its water supply. So it follows, if you want to uplift the same metropolis, why not pop some antidepressants in the drink instead? End quote. All right. Think about that. Because these are the people that want to morally enhance you. Uh, and by the way, 
antidepressants are already leaching into the tap water to begin with because most of our water filtration systems at sewage treatment plants don't remove half the medications or more out of the water anyways. That's why our fish are getting too lazy to propagate. Mass doses of psychiatric drugs sound ridiculous at the first uh, blanch of the concept. Remember, these are how things begin. This is how the debate begins. Morally enhancing our population was recently aired by two professors of philosophy from Britain's University of Oxford and University of Gothenburg in Sweden. In their book called Unfit for the Future, The Urgent Need for Moral Enhancement. Remember, enhancement is a tr tricky term. <laughs> it depends what you mean by by enhancement. All right. Their concern really was the pace of scientific advancement as far as technology is increasing incredibly fast. But morally, we're not evolving as fast. So this technology is becoming dangerous. So if we, unless we find a way to morally enhance ourselves instead of evolve ourselves, we may blow ourselves away. All right says and basically they said you know particularly in human genetics and human biology you know eventually we'll be able to genetically modify ourselves as well and uh into this form of moral enhancement so they say we're doing it anyways with prosthetic limbs medications you name it so why not just do it for everybody now keep this in mind now if you want to morally enhance a soldier to kill more effectively um why don't you just take his conscience away or the ability to understand what's right or wrong. Just accept orders. If you want a happier society, why not morally enhance them to stop dreaming about things they want or need? Just take their dreams away. Make them happy being in the now. Or whatever you want to call it. But that's what it comes down to be. Moral enhancement needs to be changed. It's actually what they're trying to get at is moral refinement. Ironically, the exact same leaders which create the problems of the world are the exact same people that automatically now want to morally enhance you. What are they really scared of? And obviously this is what it comes down to. It's fear. Fear of each other. That's what these philosophers are getting at. So by drugging everybody, then we have control over what we may deem an uncontrollable situation. So instead of evolving ourselves, whoop, up. I'll get back to that in a second. So we can use these techniques to overcome the moral and psychological shortcomings that imperil the human species. And this is their quote again, not mine. I.E. I.E. is actually in there itself. You don't give a crap about climate change. We'll put something in the water to make sure you do care. Wow. So, we don't want any scientific debate. We just want you to believe what we say because you don't have the qualifications to know or how to read science or data. Even if you are a scientist, what the heck are you doing questioning other scientists? Oh my gosh, it sounds like the dark ages of science. It must be something medieval. Everybody think alike. Otherwise, if we can't add drugs to your water, we'll just create some sort of scientific inquisition. All right. Before you start screaming Brave New World, that's what they said. Consider how many human enhancements we already embrace. The prosthetic limbs, li limbs and vaccines to genetic modifications. Think about vaccines. It's not a genetic modification. Do you realize that the rubella vaccine, when given can create depression up to 10 weeks after the vaccine. Have you ever heard of something called the FUNVAX, the fundamental vaccine? What I'm getting at is this. They're already attempting this in many different venues that you're not even aware of. And the problem is, these are not by people which are doing it to enhance people. They're doing it to control people. And fear is the best motivator to control. Oh, your pension's going to go away. Your neighbor's got a gun. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do in my old age. Uh, this guy next door to me is acting weird. He's, he's growing vegetables without a permit out of his backyard. How can he do this? We need to morally enhance him so he can conform better. Says other may ar others may argue, and this is their quote, not mine. 
that more better moral education is the answer. But if the tech but if the teachings of Buddha, Confucius, Socrates, Jesus, and Kant haven't made an impression, I'm skeptical that Mr. Stringbag's high school ethics class is going to cut much ice or save the polar ice caps from melting. So, we go from genetically modified salmon, which obviously must be healthy because we can't find anything wrong with it, to the Serbians, so much trying to fight to protect their culture and allow organic farming and the people to eat what they want to eat and possibly supply food to the rest of the world, to basically philosophers who find no reason, actually they find a noble trait in basically making sure you don't think what you want to think. To make sure you think what you're supposed to think. And if they don't like it, will just either enter your tap water or genetically modified you. And henceforth comes the age or the end of an age of free thought. So, stay informed, stay aware. Someone hands you a glass of water, sniff it first. And once again, thank you very much for watching this other edition of the Health Research Report, 28th December 2012. And I'll catch you guys next week.